How to make venison bacon. Now, if you're a deer hunter and you've never made venison bacon, you're really missing out. It's one of my favorite things to make out of my deer meat. So grab all that old venison from the freezer, Mark. We're gonna amplify some backyard barbecue fun. I'm doing a 12 and a half pound batch today, so we're gonna have to take our cure and our unit B, as they call it, and cut these in half because both of these packs do 25 pounds. And I'll start with splitting this venison bacon B unit in half first. We start off by just hitting our scale, turn it on, and I already have it set to grams. Take your little bowl, and I don't know, I love using these little blue ones. Place it on there, and then we're gonna hit tear, and that's gonna clear out our scale. Cut open our pack real quick, and we have 113 grams. So we want to get right around 56 or so. Yeah, 56 and a half, I think. Oh God, I went over. There we go, 56.5. And I bought some of these empty shakers just so I can store this stuff when I do it just a half a batch. I just shoved the whole bag in there too so I know exactly what's in this shaker. I don't have to write any labels. The next time I do a batch, I'll do 12 and a half pounds again. So we can take this one off and repeat. Press that tear button because if you don't zero it out, your measurements are going to be off. I hope that picked up because you know I have my shotgun mic now. And if that fart registered on that shotgun mic, I'm putting it in the video. Shotgun mic. Shotgun mic. Shortgun. Yeah, sharded. I have 208 grams of maple cure. So I'll just split it in half to 104 grams. Cut the old top. We just start the same way, start pouring that in. And of course, I always bump it and go way over. God. And we're closing in. Yeah, there we go. Perfect, 104. Look at zero spillage. I got my two ingredients all measured out. Now, it's time to get to grinding. Now, if you watched my venison hot stick video, you saw that we had about 30 pounds of venison meat and we sent it through just one pass through the coarse grind. Now we're just gonna open it up, get it in this tub, and this is still really cold. We took it out of the freezer this morning. And my meat ratio that I'm using is six and a quarter pounds of venison and six and a quarter pounds of pork butt. We're trying to get right around that 80-20. This was pretty lean, but we'll be able to do it. And we're just gonna get this kind of incorporated, mix it up a little bit, so it's a nice equal venison and pork. Now I'm using a six millimeter or a 3 16 inch plate for this last grind. I'm just filling up my hopper. Now I'll start up the grinder and get to work. I never really force anything down my grinders. You just kind of work it into that hole. Yeah, we're getting towards the end. It didn't take more than a couple minutes. Scrape it out good because you want every little morsel make it in that bacon. I let it spin a little bit and push a little bit more out of there. Still make this stuff work. Get the grinder head off and then we're gonna get to mixing. Get some nitro gloves on and let's start loading up this hopper. Plop! Right in the center. All right, we pretty much got all the grind out of this bag. First, we'll start off with our maple cure. Get that spread across the top and then our venison bacon B unit. Get that spread across the top. And then I'm just adding a cup and a half of distilled water. Just pour that over the top too. And now we'll turn it on. Now we're gonna mix this for about seven to eight minutes. We really want that protein extraction to get to work. And typically when I go around that time to mix up any batch that I'm doing, I have a really good emulsified meat mixture. All right, we're rolling in on that eight minutes. Just scrape that side down a little. And I typically do that about every two minutes. I use my Epicurean spoon and just scrape down the sides. Looks pretty good, let's shut her down. I can tell right now that this is perfect. That protein extraction is hard at work. Now this bacon, we're gonna mold it. And what I mean by that, grab an aluminum foil pan and we're gonna press it out. Now I like to use a little parchment paper when I'm making a mold. You don't have to. You can always tear the aluminum foil apart. Just start digging it out. And again, this is a good grind. You want this. You don't want it falling off your glove. But we just start getting it in here, start pressing it out, get these last 
couple big globs out. And this size pan is about the maximum that you can use for a 12 and a half pound mix. I like to make the bacon a little thicker slices. Keep on squeezing her down in there. There is gonna be some air pockets in here, little ones, but if you do it the way I showed you, it gets it pretty tight. Now I just take some saran wrap and we wanna keep all of the air out of this the best that we can. After I get the saran wrap on, I just kind of press it down a little bit just to make sure that it's adhered to this bacon. Now we'll put this back in the fridge and let it cure for 24 hours. The next time you see me, we're gonna get to rolling some smoke. This venison bacon has been in the refrigerator for almost 24 hours. I already preheated my smokehouse to 120 degrees. So it's time to start rolling the smoke, but first we gotta get this venison bacon out of this pan. Simple enough, peel off your saran wrap, take a nice wire rack, flip it on top, and flip over your bacon. Now, just take off the pan. Carefully pull off your parchment paper, and there we go. Shazam! We got some venison bacon, but we gotta cook it first. The only other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit of this apple pie to sweeten up this top edge. I don't like to overdo it, but just a little bit of hint of sweetness helps this bacon a lot. So we're just gonna shake her on there, and you don't need a lot. We'll get this table rolled out of the way, and we're gonna get our PK100 in place so it can be underneath the spotlight, or also what I call Zeus. Look at it's brighter. Breaker 1-9, this here's the rubber duck. Anybody got their ears on? For sure, for sure, pig pen. Copy that. We got a straight shot to Taco Town. I think they changed the flag staff or something. But if any of you know where Taco Town is, please let me know because it sounds like a great place to eat. I love tacos. 10-4, good buddy. Keep up the work. Freedom. Now, obviously, I'm using my Thermalworks to monitor the internal temperatures on this venison bacon. But we just want to get this in and drop it right down. Here it is. One big loaf of venison bacon. And we're going to slide it in right to the top. Who sings that song? I don't know why I'm so nostalgic right now. I'm going to place two meat probes in. One on the right-hand side and one on the left-hand side. This way, we can monitor our internal temperatures. And that certainly is some nice cold meat. We're just below 35 degrees. I'm going to run this for 30 minutes and then I'll bring you back when it's time to add the smoke. My 30 minute timer went off, it's time to add this hickory sawdust. I filled this container three quarters full and added a little bit of water to this sawdust because we don't want it to burn up real quick. A lot of you have already heard that before, but I figured I might as well tell you again. We just take our sawdust pan and put it right on that little heating element. Now obviously there hasn't been much change to our venison bacon yet. And we're gonna bring our smokehouse up to 150 degrees. Now obviously I whipped out my donger and I grabbed Grab Moby. Get him up in there. Without these two, I'd be smoked out of my studio. Now I'll set a timer for two hours and then I'll check and see what my sawdust pan looks like. If there's still some left in there, then we'll just burn it out. I'll bring it back when we pull out that pan. We're three and a half hours into this cook, but at the two and a half hour mark, I checked out that sawdust and we still had some left in that pan. But I decided to turn the smokehouse up to 170 degrees. By now, that sawdust is pretty much all burnt out. Get out that pan and just check on that venison and bacon and see what kind of color we've got. It's running pretty even or right around that 86 degrees on both sides. Just put on a welding glove before you grab this pan, but yeah, it's pretty empty. For sure, we got a really nice color developing on that bacon. Just close it back up and we'll turn this pit up to 180 degrees to finish off this cook. Now I'm gonna run this venison bacon up to 155 degrees internal temperature. I'll bring it back when it's time to shut down this pit. I've got eight and a half hours into this cook and I've reached an internal temperature of 155 degrees on this venison bacon. Let's open up the pit and take a look at it. We'll shut off the PK100. Oh, heck yeah. That certainly has a beautiful smoky color. I'm gonna leave the door open to the pit and we're just gonna let this come up to room temperature naturally. After about two hours, I'm gonna put it back in the refrigerator refrigerator and we're gonna let this sit in there uncovered for 24 hours. This is gonna help it firm up so it's a lot easier to slice. So in another day, I'll meet you by the cutting board. My venison bacon is nice and firm. You can see there ain't no jiggle in this. And that's what you want. We're just gonna slice it once and a half for right now. 
slicer crossed. And there we go. There is our venison bacon. Like I said earlier, you're gonna find a few little air pockets, but big deal. For the most part, this thing is a solid loaf. It looks pretty dang good, and we even got a little bit of a smoke ring on it. We're gonna slice this up in this direction, because if you cut them in this direction, you can only get a few in the pan. Turn on my slicer, and I have it set at about an eighth of an inch. Your first few pieces, you know, obviously, well, they're gonna come out a little bit of ragamuffins. I always build up a nice little scrap pile. We always take the bits and pieces and put that in for some potatoes. There we go, that's our slices. We're gonna get this all sliced up and then we're gonna cook up a couple pieces. I got my cast iron pan preheated. Let's cook up a few slices of this venison bacon. I can actually smell the apple pie rub on this too. If you've never tried it, it just gives a little bit of kiss of sweetness. Now obviously there's not as much fat in this bacon as there is in pork. Rotate them around a little bit. Yeah, we're getting some nice little color on these. You wanna crisp up this venison bacon for sure. I think we're good, we'll shut her off. Take this piece out, it's not looking too bad. Fly like an eagle, eagle. All right, here goes nothing. Tastes like venison bacon to me. It's got a good smoky flavor with a touch a little bit of sweetness from that apple pie rub. This would go great with any breakfast. When people ask me what venison bacon tastes like, I tell them it's very similar to ham, but you gotta get that little bit of crispiness on the outside. Mm -hmm. This might take a little time to process, but the payoff is worth it. Obviously, we're not gonna eat all of this today. We'll vacuum seal them and put them in the freezer. Well, that's all I got. Roll the nation. Rollin', 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 though the streams are swollen. Keep them doggies rollin', rawhide. What do you think, Ernie? That's good? Was that a good song? Am I a great singer? 